And we tailor that training to churches, organizations, even city councils so that people can understand more how, again, to create that win-win situation because that's always possible. There doesn't always have to be one group that wins and one that loses. We can all win and find all of our citizens, even the most vulnerable citizens, uh, joining us together to create a great city. in 2004. Um, during that time, I was homeless for about six years, and then I was able to get a job again. Unfortunately, I got hurt, was made homeless again, um, unable to get Social Security because they say that I'm able to do something, which I know I'm probably able to do, but getting somebody to hire me with a bad shoulder has been totally a bad deal. I have anxiety and I'm suffering from some right now. So. Um, during this time that I've been a citizen in Gresham, uh, I have been a baseball coach for Rockwood Summer Baseball. I was on this, uh, this, uh, the league board as an equipment manager. Uh, I've done quite a few things in this community as a good citizen. When I became homeless, I had about nine or ten tents cut by the police saying that I was illegal camping and what, what were we supposed to do? You know, we're out here trying to fit in and something happens and we get treated like this. And not all of us are bad. Not all of us are. Yes, there are a few that are, but you know, there's bad in everybody in every situation. And all I'd like to say is that you can take a look at us before judging, talk to us, respect us, because we are part of this community. Um, that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Okay, so my name is my name is David Keith Davis, and I'm the founder of Alton County Cop Watch, and also a member of Fight the Sweeps Portland. And we go out and um, document a lot of homeless sweeps. And I was actually formerly homeless in this town, on and off, from uh, 2005. Uh, I was homeless for about six and a half years, and the county of uh, Portland, like Multnomah and uh, Gresham and all these various areas around here. But uh, basically these sweeps, they um, displace people left and right. And like Mike Davis was saying, it uh, destroys the ability for outreach workers to do their job efficiently and to actually keep uh, going in trying to get homeless people off the streets. So basically, all these sweeps are totally ineffective and all they do is be a big roadblock and cause barriers to people actually getting back into housing and stuff like that. And there's a lot of different solutions you guys could do. Portland is, you know, relying on all the poverty temp agencies and I actually saw that you guys are uh, kind of doing the same type of things. You, you might want to consider actually, as a city, taking a more progressive approach and buying a bunch of uh, bank foreclosures because there's a 37% vacancy rate on bank foreclosures in this area. And you could actually buy up those properties, get people in them. <clears throat> a lot of people actually have uh, SSI checks and other stuff, but they still can't afford to get into housing over various barriers. So you could have city programs where you buy up housing for uh, all these bank foreclosures and then get different people in there and, you know, restore 
these vacant properties because a lot of these vacant properties they're they're just uh, being you know left to rot and as the citizens are left to rot in the streets so basically it's a really bad approach to and you know this banking crisis in America is one of the things that contributed to a lot of homelessness and you know they're shipping jobs overseas we got the banking crisis all this various stuff so you know you guys should actually just start buying up some foreclosures and putting people into those things and stop the sweeps because totally ineffective and it doesn't work and all it is is a barrier to people actually getting back into housing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next three are Chris Cassetto, Trina Sutton. And who? Must be me. Yes, my name is Chris Cazetto, and I am here again to ask, where is the voice of the homeless? Last week, I attended a city council meeting and expressed my frustrations to the council that the homeless have been left out of the process. And what I hear back from the city and from the media is we hijacked the meeting. But that's not the way that I see it. The way that I see it is we brought a voice and boosted a voice of our homeless population in Gresham who are, in all, for all intents and purposes, economic refugees. I apologize if we inconvenience council for delaying its business for approximately 45 minutes. The business was conducted. I'm extremely sick today. I have been sick for the past couple of weeks, but because the homeless have asked for help in boosting their voice, I've made it a point to make that sacrifice to be here and work to help them have that voice. I think that it's very petty for my city and my council, my representatives, the people who are elected to represent me, feel inconvenience that the homeless have a voice and are delaying some sort of business process. And I apologize for the way that I'm speaking now, but again, I'm not feeling the best. So what I wanna ask you is how the homeless have been involved in this process. I hear that the city's working on solutions but who are those solutions for? The people on the view? The people in the Southwest Neighborhood Association? Because that's where the vast number of the complaints are coming from. And it's a small number of residents in those neighborhood associations that are complaining. So the solution that's been offered for the house is to fence off an area and protect what they consider a vital resource. They say that it's being destroyed. And again, I disagree. I acknowledge there is damage being done, but it's not damage that won't recover on its own. It's disturbing land, not destroying land. And when it comes to human life, land is not as important when it's damaged as saving a human life. And so when I'm asking, is it the homeless were involved? How, how would this help the homeless? Had they had a say, do you think that they would agree to have 60 acres fenced off where approximately 50% of Gresham's homeless population has slept at least once over the past six months? Where are these people supposed to go? I'm very disappointed in seeing these changes because they're nothing more than discrimination. I understand that everyone's being excluded from this land and everybody suffers, so it's definitely not a solution for anyone. I, I acknowledge there is trash out there. I acknowledge that there are problems out there, but these are not things that couldn't be overcome. We've been working on solutions. The homeless have solutions themselves. Nobody's talking to them. Nobody's bringing them here. It's taking us concerned citizens who recognize them as economic refugees and as neighbors to get them here. I think the city needs to do more to listen to these voices, more to recognize these as citizens, and more to listen to the concerns of the unhoused because they will also address some of the concerns of the house. There are win-win solutions in this. I see them, I know them, but the way that this city is pursuing is not gonna work. Every city in America has tried something similar and it has not worked. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor and Council members for letting me speak. My name is Trina Sutton. I am the chairwoman for the proposed uh, transitional uh, housing community known as My Backyard. We have been working for two and a half years with the city of Portland. I did not get very far. I got patted on the head a lot and told what a good girl I was until we started getting businesses. The police signed on. In fact, our architect is a Portland police officer. We have um, people from academia. We have sociologists, economists. Everybody is saying this works. It will work. And I am really surprised that Gresham hasn't picked up on this. It's been in the newspaper. Um, when we started it, it was actually um, not only me, but Mike Davis, who's sitting behind me, that started um, my backyard. Um, we are actually going to be submitting um, Thursday um, the final proposal along with the schematics for the tiny houses. The city of Portland now has the wisdom that the old ways are not working. It is costing them a fortune. They are not going to leave their home place. They are destroying lives. They're destroying their reputation. S City of Portland wants to be known as progressive and an example for the rest of the country. I would very much like for Gresham to be right there with them because you are all part of one body of people. And I would really appreciate if you might uh, consider uh, forming a committee here and talking to us and uh, finding solutions we're more than willing to do it. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Sure. Yes, my name is Robert West. I'm with Film the Police 911. And I wanted to bring up the homeless issues too. The sweeps don't work. They never did. All they do is cost a lot of money. They make it where people that are trying to give them services can't find them, which can endanger their lives and other people's lives. And that 